What's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Ricky Sanders of DailyRoto.com, who's here to break down tonight's NBA slate. What's happening, Ricky? Nothing. I think it's a good night for tonight to be called the hurry up. We got three games with a 228 point total or higher. We've got a couple unsure situations amongst, you know, the superstars, but otherwise we got a lot of value at point guard. We got a lot of guys worth spending up for. So I think it should be a fun night. Yeah, it should be. It should be a blast, man. I'm excited about it as well. Let's talk about some of these stars in these high paced games. And that brings us to the king, LeBron James. That's the superstar we're building around tonight. Why do you like LeBron? I would like Giannis if that game were expected to remain competitive, but I just am not sure how the Kings keep that one close. So instead, we'll go to LeBron James at home as 12-point favorites in his own right. He's much cheaper than Giannis. He's 1,100 cheaper, and we've got them projected within about two and a half fantasy points of one another tonight. And you look at it, I mean, even with Anthony Davis in rotation, LeBron James has posted some really solid rates this year. He's a 49.5% assist rate with Anthony Davis. Davis this year. You look at the baselines on dailyroto.com besides that. 30.5% usage rate, about a 12% rebound rate. And you look at the matchup specifically against the Suns, a team that's a league average defense against opposing front courts. And LeBron has lit them up over 51 FanDuel fantasy points in three of his last five meetings. I think it's a good spot here for him to get up and down the court. And those are the, the kind of games where you can get LeBron approaching a triple double. And that's what you want to see if you're rostering him. So I really like the, you know, that sort of pace to this game tonight. Should be a fun one for LeBron and the pace, like some of these other games out there, uh, should be fast, should be high scoring. So LeBron uh, in a good spot tonight for the Lakers, which means he's in a good spot for you on FanDuel. Up next, next story you got to make sure you get in there is the Dominator, Demontis Sabonis of the Indiana Pacers. Price has come down, but he's still really good. Yeah, I mean, even with Victor Oladipo back, we're talking about a player who just has some massive rates upside. Again, his usage rate is going to come under duress with Victor Oladipo. And even so on Daily Roto, we're projecting him for over 20% rates across the board. That's over a 20% usage, over a 20% assist rate, and over a 20% rebound rate. And there are just so few of those players across the NBA and especially so few that come at under $8,000 on FanDuel. I mean, he's facing a Brooklyn defense that has really struggled against centers. They've been good up against power forwards. But I think it's kind of sneaky here. Uh, you know, it's sneaky wrong to look at this matchup and kind of just identify Sabonis as the power forward because they split up Miles Turner and Sabonis. And Sabonis will play some extended stretches at the center position. So it makes sense that he's gone over 46 FanDuel fantasy points in each of his meetings against them this year. We're only projecting 44 tonight, but 44 fantasy points is a ton at an under 8K price tag, which makes him just a fantastic value. The value is amazing. Sabonis is going to have plenty of opportunities to pick up the pace for the Indiana Pacers and score a ton on FanDuel. Sabonis, always one of our favorites, and tonight is very much included. The one guy you got to get in there tonight, Ricky, it's... Nikola Vucevic, this team total, I know you're going to talk about it, is crazy for Orlando. This is a team that their game total is always around like 206. Their team total tonight at 114, it's insane. Yeah, you just never see that for the Magic. And that's, again, 11 points above their seasonal average Vegas is expecting against this Hawks team, which obviously speeds teams up. They're fourth in pace this year. They also have not been able to defend the post. They're dead last in post defense in terms of points per possession allowed. And obviously, Nikola Vucevic, just a fantastic player in the post. Now, the addition of Dwayne Dedman, who's a 60th percentile defender in the post, should help solidify, you know, their weaknesses, but I don't think he's magically going to fix this defense. And Vucci main is priced under $9,000. And in a matchup like this, where this team is projected to score basically a ceiling game for their offense, you know, they're going to need Vooch in the middle doing some work. I am a little bit concerned that we have a second end of a back-to-back -back here for, with the Hawks, and the game could get out of hand, but I do expect Vucevic to be a big part of this game getting out of hand if it gets to that point. I have a little bit more confidence in the Hawks than you do. I, I think the Hawks will be able to, to keep this one close. I do know it's a second end of a back-to-back -back for them, double OT last night against the Knicks, but I think the Hawks will keep it close against Orlando, and Nikola Vucevic should have his way. It's going to be a fun one between the Magic and the Hawks, and Nikola Vucevic is going to be the reason why. 
All right, for all these guys, we named three pretty expensive stars. we got to find some value, and let's break it down and begin with point guard Ian Dallas, and that's Jalen Brunson. We know Christos Porzingis is questionable. Luka Doncic not expected to play, which means Jalen Brunson should be in, in store for a pretty big workload this evening. Yeah, and Jalen Brunson has kind of been solidified in the starting lineup. I need him to be a starter in order to consider him because they have done some weird things where J.J. Barea has started, but that kind of looks like a thing of the past. And when we've got Brunson starting without Luka Doncic, we've gotten production this year. He's averaging 28.5 FanDuel fantasy points per game without Doncic this year. And now we have Kristaps Porzingis questionable as well. And I know it was a matchup against the Hawks, but he went into the mid-40s of FanDuel fantasy fantasy points that that game where there was no Porzingis and there was no Doncic he shot poorly the last time it was a similar scenario but you look at the rates I mean he has been a 35 and a half percent assist rate without Luka Doncic this year so you don't even need Porzingis out to know that this is an upgraded version of Jalen Brunson while he's on the floor his usage rate improves about two percentage points so it goes up but not as crazily but it's really the minutes over 29 minutes per game without Luka again we expect him to start and the matchup isn't perfect against this Jazz team, but he's being priced at 4600 and he's a starting point guard. So I think that's the end of the equation there. You look at the rates, you look at the overall context, it's just too good to pass. You look at the rates, you look at those stats, but most importantly, Ricky, you look at that price. It's way too good to pass up. Jalen Brunson's in store for a big game. Let's take advantage tonight. Get Brunson in there for under 5 k Another value player that we're loving here tonight, it's Kendrick Nunn of the Miami Heat. Why do you like Nunn in this spot for Miami, second night of a back-to-back for them? Well, I think the masses are going to be scared off of Kendrick Nunn after his last, let's call it what it was, a stinker. He did not shoot well from the field. He shot just four of 18. So I think people are going to say, well, this player isn't guaranteed to be productive without Hero and Butler. And while no one's guaranteed to be productive, he is a guy who's averaged 32 and a half minutes per game without Tyler Hero this year. The Warriors 29th in defensive efficiency against opposing point guards. And this is a guy who over the course of those last two games without Tyler Hero has taken 37 shots. So sure, he shot poorly last game, but if he has just a below average shooting game as opposed to like a floor game, we're still talking about a good game from Kendrick Nunn at 4,600. I think you go right back to the well with him and you don't worry about that last game. You just look at the quantity, man. The amount of shots that Kendrick Nunn is taking, well worth getting him in there. We know it didn't necessarily work out. Tonight it's going to. Ricky promises. Get Kendrick Nunn in there in your lineups. One final player to get to here this evening, and it is Bruce Brown. Not a name we've talked about a lot recently, but given some of the maneuvers at the trade deadline, Bruce Brown makes some sense tonight. Bruce Brown is just a player who's going to be on the floor a lot without Derrick Rose. This Charlotte team struggles in the paint, which is good news for for Brown, who will get to the paint, but it's also good news for his potential assist attempt, or you know, completing the assists, where he's got players that he could dump the ball to in the paint. And we're projecting him for 32 and a half minutes in this role. He's 4,500, so basically the same price tag as the other guys we've talked about. And while his raw projection isn't quite as impressive, we're still talking about a player without Derrick Rose. We've got projected at over a 26% assist rate. He's not as big of a part of the offense as the other players in terms of shooting. He's like a 17 and a half percent usage rate player. But we feel better about his minutes upside comparatively to Jalen Brunson. I mean, if there's one of these two players who could play 37 minutes, it's clearly Bruce Brown. Charlotte, not a defense we're worried about. And this Detroit team who, you know, lost Andre Drummond, they're actually home favorites tonight, which you don't see a lot. So in a competitive game environment against a team with multiple guards, which, you know, the team likes to use Bruce Brown to, to defend like the off guard. You can choose Devontae Graham, Terry Rozier. Should be plenty of minutes for Brown regardless. I think it's just a spot where he should be on the floor a lot, and the Pistons obviously will remain competitive. So I think that's a good you know, setup for him as well. And what it should be a competitive environment for Detroit. Bruce Brown is going to be out there a lot. We'll take the minutes and hope the production comes along with it. Opportunity doesn't always create production. Hopefully tonight for Bruce Brown, it does just that. Ray Sanders, we appreciate the time. Good luck tonight. Of course. Thanks for having me as always. Absolutely. Tomorrow, we'll be joined by Jim Sonis and Davis Maddox to take a look at this week on the PGA Tour. Have a great night. Enjoy the games. And we'll see you back here tomorrow for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Out.